good morning and welcome. Welcome to our celebration of worship here at First Congregational Church in Elyria. We are so delighted to have everyone join us both in person and online. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the God who creates, the God who redeems, the God who sustains. We join mind, heart, voice, all that we are in worship. Verses 18 to 9 1. 
You are my, you who are my comfort and sorrow. My heart is faint within me. Listen to the cry of my people from a land far away. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is your king no longer there? Why have they aroused my anger with their images? And their worthless born on idols? The harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn for mercy. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no position there? Why then is there no healing for the womb of my people? Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a mountain of tears. I will weep day and night for the slain of my people. Our psalter today is Psalm 79, verses 1 and 9. If you could join me in listen. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have piled their holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of their servants and the birds of the air in your food. The flesh of your faithful to the wild animals of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water for all the rounds of your citizens. And there is no one to bury them. We have been coming to Mons for the Christians. Oh, my God, we are guided by those who are us. How long, O God, will you be angry forever? Will your jealous wrath burn like fire? Put out your anger on the nations that do not know you, and on the nations that do not call on your name. For they have been out of and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against us the iniquities of our ancestors. Let your compassion come speedily to feed us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O oh God, our salvation, for the glory of your name, to deliver us and forgive our sins, for your name's sake. <coughs> our second lesson today comes from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. I urge them, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases to God our Savior. He wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling you the truth, I am not lying, and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Remember, 
You are not able to serve two masters. You will hate one, love the other, or you will despise both. One cannot serve both God and material wealth. Here ends today's gospel reading. Would you join with me in prayer? Loving God, I pray the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. Allow each of us to continue to grow into the people who call us to be. Amen. Christianity, at its very heart, is radical. It is radical in that it calls each and every person to love one another. To love even those that we may not agree with or care for. Christianity is radical in that it challenges the socioeconomic status quo. It does not see material wealth as a gain, but instead a burden. Christianity is radical in that it sees the world differently than what is upheld socially. Within our society, we have many, many different ways in which our society attempts to tell us what is successful what we should be striving for, what is important. And in today's gospel reading, the living community says, no, wait a minute. Not necessarily accurate. It upholds instead the realm of God being the most important. Loving one another, caring for the poor and the stead destitute, not being concerned with one's material wealth position, but instead caring for others, meeting the needs the broken and the wounded. In actuality, the gospel message is about taking what we have and making the world a better place. <coughs> In actuality, it's about taking what we have and allowing life to be better for those around us. It's certainly not saying that material wealth is bad. It's not saying that success is bad. It's instead asking, though, what do we do? What do we value? What do we do with the material wealth? Are we concerned about the needs of others? Do we do what we are able to ease the burdens of others? Do we see success as something we're able to lord over others? challenge the gospel message. 
radical, indeed, challenging the very existence of what the world tells us is important. Even though it is mid-September, our scripture readings will continue to challenge us further and further as we draw closer to the end of the liturgical year. They will challenge us to truly ask what's important? What have we done with life? How have we bettered the world around us? In one very simple phrase, has the world been a better place because of us? Have we brought God's love, life, to others? What have we done? What will we do? It's true, one cannot serve two masters. In other words, one cannot be committed to two very different goals. Our commitment is either with living out the gospel message, our commitment is fulfilling what the world tells us we should do. One will bring us success within this life. The other will make the world a better place. Hopefully, each of us is of the mind wanting the world to be a better place. And hopefully, each of us will do our part to make the world a better place and bring God's love, compassion, understanding and acceptance to others. We can serve two differing values. It's our decision. It's our choice. The world or the gospel make the world a better place with each small gesture we do. Amen.
the application of faith, please. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We live in God, who has created and is created, who has come Jesus, the Lord, made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us by the Holy Spirit. We trust now. We are now all in the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and in death, in life and in death. God is with us. We are not alone. And I see that. You can see it. Loving God, you who are always with us, hear us. We come as your children, as members of your family, with our needs. The needs we hold in the silence of our hearts, the needs that we speak aloud. We pray for the sick, the hospitalized especially those who we now name. We pray for Farrah Healy, for Gary McConnell, Reba Damon, Ken Smith of Virginia, Marianne Guam, Betty Salisbury, Grace Lundsbrough, Jeff Lucas, Amy Summers, Ruthie Hales, Linda Schmidt, Rebecca Mullins, Judy Loftus, Annie, Amy Miller, and for all those in need of prayer. We pray for governments, world leaders, <coughs> that they may work towards peace, and justice, the rights of all peoples. We pray for those impacted by Hurricanes, typhoons, rain, floods, wildfires, all forms of natural disaster, climate change. Pray for those without food, clothing, shelter, health care. May their needs be met. We pray for students, teachers, administrators, all of those involved in the process of education, that they may be guided by the Spirit. We pray for the city of Valeria and all of those involved in the Apple Festival, that it may be successful, that all may enjoy peace and tranquility. We pray for those who have no one to pray for them. Loving God, hear us. Allow us to know that you continue to be with us, always present, abiding with us. For loving God, in the fullness of your time, you sent Jesus to become one of us. Jesus who walked and walks among us. Jesus who taught and continues to teach us. Jesus who calls each of us to deeper relationship with you, to conversation with you, to prayer. We continue our prayer in whatever words are the most familiar or comfortable to you. 
the bread that nourishes a hungry world, the cup that quenches the thirst of all. My sisters, my brothers, the gifts of God for the people of God, let us share together as we are able. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. God of all, we are shared in word and sacrament. Strengthened by the Son, we respect with you. Send us to your communities to be the witnesses of the gospel message. We ask this and we ask all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit. One to God, forever and ever. Our thanks to Andrew for doing the technology, to Erica for being our liturgist, and to Dylan for being on the organ bench. And of course, a thank you to each of you who have joined us both in person and online. Just one announcement. Next week, the choir will return. So we will have more music added to our worship celebration. And we certainly look forward to the incredible music and all that the choir is able to bring and enhance our worship celebration. My sisters, my brothers, we have heard the good news message. We have been nourished in Christ's table. Filled with the power of the Spirit, let us go forth that we may be instruments of God's love to all that we encounter. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>